Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries. Last spring, I spruced up the front of our garage apartment landscaping by adding some plants, some rock, and a nice concrete curb. We did this a few years ago to the front of our last house and loved it so much that we wanted to do the same thing here. So in this video, I'll show you how I made this concrete landscape curb. Now, just a forewarning, I filmed this over a year ago and I didn't get the footage of the entire process. I'm sharing the step-by-step -step instructions in the blog post and anything that I wasn't able to film, I will explain here in detail. Now, let's get to work. The first thing I did was dig out where I wanted to add the curb. I wasn't really technical with this, I just kind of dug out the general shape that I wanted my curb to take in about the location that I wanted it to be. I was making my curb about four and a half inches wide, so I dug out about six inches wide and about four to five inches deep. Then it was time to start making the form. Here's where I didn't get all of the footage. I was in a hurry to get this finished between when I got home from work and when the sun went down, so I had to really focus. But to build the form, I used a quarter inch plywood and some scrap wood stakes. I stapled the plywood to the stakes and then drove the stakes into the ground like shown. I didn't want my entire curb below ground, so I left the form sticking up about an inch or so above ground level. I'll explain a little more about making the forms here. Hey guys, let's talk about the form for a minute. I didn't get a full video of me laying the form, but I'm going to explain to you how I did it. It's very simple. I used scrap wood for the stakes, just some real thin pieces that I had cut off a 2x4, and quarter inch plywood. Because my form was going to be curvy, quarter inch plywood worked really well because it was flexible enough to bend with the curve. Um, I stapled my quarter inch plywood to the stakes. You could use screws if you wanted, but my stakes were really... Um, narrow and the screws would have gone through I think it would have just split everything so staples worked great for me um, I cut my plywood four and a half inches wide so that that way my curb would be about four and a half inches deep if I filled it to the top well I laid the outside one first um, driving the stakes into the ground just getting it kind of where I wanted it once I got the outside form from one side of the porch all the way to the other I started laying the inside. I just spaced it out ever so often. I'd measure when I drove the stakes. I would measure and just make sure everything stayed about four and a half inches wide. You don't have to do four and a half inches wide. Four and a half inches is just what I did. You could do four, four, five, six, whatever. Um, I did four and a half. If you're really picky, you can use spacer blocks in between here to make sure that it stays four and a half, like the whole way across. One thing you want to try to do is keep the front and the back the outside and the inside pieces fairly level this direction because you don't want your curb curb kind of like slanting or all your concrete running off or um, you want to keep it fairly level. So once the forms were in place I backfilled some dirt around the outsides to help support the forms so that when I poured the concrete they didn't bow out. Then I grabbed all of my concrete mixing and pouring supplies. A bucket, a couple bags of concrete, I think I used seven or eight bags for this project, some water, gloves, shovels, and a dust mask. You don't want to be breathing in that concrete dust, I promise. I mixed small batches at a time to pour because I only had a bucket. I'd suggest using a wheelbarrow if you have one to make this a little bit easier. Once I had the concrete mixed to about the consistency of cake batter, I used the shovel to shovel it into the form. It's important to tamp the concrete to release as many air bubbles as possible. I worked my way around the form and once I poured a few feet worth, I took a wet trowel and tried to smooth everything out. I'm not a professional at this, so it wasn't the best job, but it's just a concrete curb, so I just kind of tapped and smoothed it out the best that I could and tried to get it nice and flat. Once I had that section smoothed, I mixed and poured another few feet and then smoothed that out as well. I slowly worked my way all the way around the form. It was hot, dusty, and exhausting, but it really didn't take that long. At some point, Danny got home from work and helped me finish everything up. Once 
Once everything was poured and smoothed out, I took the trowel and made these small relief cuts ever so often along the concrete curb. Concrete tends to crack over time, so making relief cuts kind of tells the concrete to crack here so that it's less noticeable. It's almost like cracking it ahead of time on purpose. I let it sit and cure for about four days. It's hard to be patient, I know, but after four days, I carefully removed the forms from around the curb. Since I had backfilled, I kind of had to dig a little bit out, but eventually I got everything out of the ground. After the form was removed, I backfilled dirt around the front side of the curb to plant grass later. And then I prepared for the landscaping area for the plants and rock. I don't have any footage of this, but I do have a few photos. I planted a few hostas and a couple of bushes in the landscape and then covered everything inside the curb with landscaping mesh. This helps prevent weeds from growing through the rocks. I had to cut some small holes to fit over the top of the hostas and the bushes. And then I shoveled some Indiana river rock over the mesh to finish everything up. And that was it. I really love adding concrete to landscape. I think it looks really clean and is quite a bit cheaper than adding a bunch of landscape edging stones. As I mentioned earlier, we did this along the landscape of our old house and it looked really, really good. So we did it as well at this place. So if you'd like more details about the process, the step-by-step, -step, everything that you need to know, head over to the blog post and check out the tutorial. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, happy building.